Whether in movies, shows, or random clips on TikTok, we've all heard various depictions of the noises dinosaurs might have made. But what did they really sound like? It's no surprise that most media forms don't accurately portray the sounds dinosaurs would have made. In the past, knowledge on this subject was limited, so you can't blame them too much. Even now, it's a topic of debate requiring further research. However, we've known for a while that the Jurassic Park franchise's depiction of dinosaurs is, well, very wrong. Recent discoveries suggest that dinosaurs didn't just roar loudly like in the movies. Instead, it's more likely that their sounds were similar to birds and reptiles, as they're all part of the archosaur group. But it depends on the dinosaur. Larger dinosaurs, like sauropods and theropods, probably made noises that were a mix of crocodilian, elephant, and possibly whale sounds, a combination of low-frequency vocalizations. Tom Williamson, curator of paleontology at the Museum of Mexico, suggests these low frequencies could help penetrate the dense undergrowth of a forest. Let's look at some dinosaurs that sound more terrifying in real life than in movies. Tyrannosaurus Rex In Jurassic Park, they used a mix of baby elephant squeals, alligator gurgles, and tiger snarls for the T-Rex. However, recent research suggests the T-Rex likely produced low-pitched, closed-mouth rumbles. Documentaries like the BBC's The Real T-Rex with Chris Packham and studies by paleontologist Julia Clark point to the T-Rex making lower-frequency noises, possibly using a mix of emu, ostrich, and alligator sounds, sized up for an 8-ton creature. Imagine the unsettling power behind that sound, far more terrifying than the simple JP T-Rex roar. You can hear an audio recreation of the T-Rex's vocalizations in the BBC documentary. The Real T-Rex with Chris Packham The T-Rex's vocalizations were likely adapted for long-distance communication, territorial displays, and intimidation. The low-frequency rumbles could have carried for miles, allowing T-Rexes to communicate with each other across vast distances. These sounds might have also been used during mating rituals, or to assert dominance over other dinosaurs. The sheer power and volume of the T-Rex's vocalizations would have been awe-inspiring and terrifying to witness in person. Parasaurolophus In 1995, a well-preserved Parasaurolophus skull was discovered. A CT scan allowed for a 3D model, and researchers emulated the sounds it would make if air passed through the passages in its prominent crest. The result was a hauntingly beautiful, almost melodic sound. However, this reconstruction doesn't consider potential soft tissue structures that could have influenced the airflow and sound. The Parasaurolophus's unique crest might have acted as a resonating chamber, amplifying its calls across long distances. This could have been used for communication, mating calls, or even to deter predators. You can listen to the Parasaurolophus recreation by Sandia National Laboratories. <laughs> The Parasaurolophus's crest was one of its most distinctive features, and it likely played a significant role in the dinosaur's vocalizations. The shape and size of the crest might have allowed for a wide range of sounds, from low-frequency bellows to high-pitched whistles. These vocalizations could have been used for various purposes, such as keeping in contact with herd members, coordinating movements, or attracting mates. The melodic nature of the Parasaurolophus's calls might have filled the prehistoric landscapes with haunting, beautiful songs. Pinacosaurus Despite being a two-ton, armored, club-tailed dinosaur, the Pinacosaurus might have made chirping noises. Paleontologists discovered a rare, kinetic, and large larynx similar to birds. Comparing the fossilized larynx parts to living birds and reptiles, they found it had features suggesting it could produce various sounds, including rumbles, grunts, roars, and possibly chirps that could travel long distances. 
However, due to its large size and distinct vocal mechanisms, it's unlikely it produced chirps or warbles exactly like modern birds. The Pinacosaurus's vocalizations might have been a unique combination of bird-like and reptilian sounds, adapted for its size and anatomy. As the research is ongoing, there are no publicly available audio recreations yet. The discovery of the Pinacosaurus's larynx provides new insights into the diversity of dinosaur vocalizations. As an ankylosaur, the Pinacosaurus was a heavily armored herbivore with a wide, low-slung body and a powerful tail club. Its vocalizations might have been used for communication within its herd, warning off predators, or even for courtship displays. The combination of bird-like and reptilian sounds could have created a unique acoustic signature, adapted for the Pinacosaurus's specific needs and environment. Carnotaurus While the Carnotaurus in Disney's dinosaur movie made generic roaring sounds, recent studies indicate it might have produced lower frequency, closed mouth booms and bellows. Its skull structure suggests it had powerful jaw muscles and could make loud, resonating noises to intimidate rivals or attract mates. The Carnotaurus's vocalizations might have been similar to the low-frequency sounds made by modern-day crocodiles and alligators, but with a unique twist adapted for its size and habitat. An audio recreation of the Carnotaurus's possible vocalizations can be found in the National Geographic documentary, Dino Deathmatch. The Carnotaurus was a fearsome predator with a distinctive appearance, featuring two short, bull-like horns above its eyes, and a muscular, streamlined body. Its vocalizations were likely as intimidating as its physical presence. The low-frequency booms and bellows could have carried long distances, allowing Carnotaurus to communicate with potential mates or rivals across its territory. These sounds might have also been used during hunting, either to coordinate with other Carnotaurus or to frighten and disorient prey. Velociraptor The Velociraptors in Jurassic Park are depicted with hissing and screeching sounds. In reality, these dinosaurs were much smaller and likely had a more bird-like vocalization. A 2009 study proposed that Velociraptor and other dromaeosaurids might have produced deep, booming sounds, similar to the low-frequency noises made by some modern birds like emus and ostriches. These sounds could have been used for communication, territorial displays, or even hunting coordination. The Velociraptor's vocalizations might have been a combination of low-frequency booms and higher-pitched, bird-like calls. An interpretation of the Velociraptor's possible sounds can be heard in the BBC documentary. Velociraptors were highly intelligent, pack-hunting predators, and their vocalizations likely reflected this complex social behavior. The combination of low-frequency booms and higher-pitched calls could have allowed for a wide range of communication, from long-distance contact calls to close-range coordination during hunts. The Velociraptor's vocalizations might have also been used for territorial displays or to reinforce social bonds within the pack. As we continue to discover more fossils and develop new technologies, our understanding of dinosaur vocalizations will keep evolving. Paleontologists and other researchers are constantly working to refine their reconstructions and interpretations based on the latest findings. By studying the anatomy, behavior, and ecology of modern animals, as well as the fossilized remains of dinosaurs, we can make more informed guesses about how these ancient creatures might have sounded. It's fascinating to think about the diversity of vocalizations that existed in the prehistoric world, from the low-frequency rumbles of the T-Rex to the possibly melodic calls of the Parasaurolophus and the potential chirps of the Pinacosaurus. Dinosaurs likely had a wide range of sounds adapted for their specific needs and environments. The more we learn about dinosaur vocalizations, the more we can appreciate the complexity and diversity of these ancient creatures. 
each species likely had its own unique acoustic signature, shaped by its anatomy, behavior, and environment. By studying these vocalizations, we can gain a deeper understanding of how dinosaurs lived, communicated, and interacted with their world. In addition to the dinosaurs mentioned above, there are many other species whose vocalizations are being studied and reconstructed. For example, the hadrosaurs, a group of duck-billed dinosaurs, are thought to have had complex vocalizations thanks to their elaborate nasal passages and crests. Some paleontologists have suggested that these dinosaurs might have produced sounds similar to modern-day ducks, or geese. Another intriguing case is that of the sauropods, the massive, long-necked herbivores that included some of the largest land animals ever to exist. Due to their size and the structure of their necks, it's been proposed that sauropods might have produced infrasound, or extremely low-frequency sounds, which could have traveled for miles. These vocalizations could have been used for long-distance communication, mating calls, or even to ward off predators. As research into dinosaur vocalizations continues, we can expect to hear more fascinating audio recreations and interpretations. These sounds not only help us to better understand these long-extinct creatures, but also to appreciate the incredible diversity and complexity of life in the prehistoric world. So, what do you think? Do you prefer the depictions in movies? or the latest research suggesting a wide variety of noises, from deep frequencies to chirping? Let me know in the comments below. We've reached the end of the video, and I hope you all enjoyed it. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. See you!